Thanks for having us. And Sophia, thanks for the, the introduction. Really excited to be here. Um, my name is Shay. I'm a senior technical recruiter for Reddit. I support our ads engineering and products, but over my career have hired for pretty much anything that is within a, a corporate office. Um, and here with one of my colleagues, Cynthia, who runs our university programs. She is a, a great resource on these topics as well, too. Um, and yeah, Cynthia, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Super excited to be here. Um, as she mentioned, I manage university programs. So I do all the recruiting for interns. Um, we have summer interns here. Um, mainly catered towards junior students within college, but we have engineering, we also have business sales, so we kind of have interns across the board, um, and so it's really fun kind of just getting to know the teams, and I think um, just seeing the different opportunities within the tech space, I think have been really fun, so I'm here for moral support for Shay, but I'm also happy to like answer any questions pertaining to like internships or anything at all. Cool, so yeah, we're gonna have Shay and Cynthia here for about the first half of our session together. So that's where all of our guest students as well are welcome to, to um, join us. And um, Shay, do you want them to kind of ask questions as you go along or do you wanna do your spiel and then ask Q&A? What, what's your preference? Um, yeah, I guess it depends in terms of timing. I mean, people can definitely type their questions in the chat. I think it might be easier actually to do questions at the end, mm -hmm. um, but then we can backtrack to like those slides if there were any specific areas that um, people wanted more time with. Um, but yeah, we can use the chat and then just open it up. Um, my my slides won't take too long, maybe like 15, 20 minutes and then perfect we'll have some time for, for questions. Okay, great. Yeah, so for, for all of you students, just keep in mind what your questions are and then you have two people at Reddit, a tech company out there. Um, so definitely use this opportunity to ask whatever questions you have about um, job hunting, internship hunting at a, a tech company like Reddit. So Shay, you can take it away. Cool, sounds good. Um, Cynthia, if you wouldn't mind sharing, and then we'll be good to go. Perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah. Um, as I introduced myself before, my name is Shay, and um, most of this uh, presentation is going to be focused towards LinkedIn and networking, um, but happy to answer any questions, even, you know, related to interviews and things like that. I just felt like this um, was probably the most important kind of starting point for um, those of you in the session. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just want to point out, um, if you're curious about what types of roles we have at Reddit, um, even if you're not necessarily looking right now or don't feel ready, um, feel free to check out our careers page. I think there is an option to like keep in touch or, or sign up for our newsletter so that you'll have um, roles sent to you um, within the field staff you're looking for. So shameless plug for Reddit. Definitely keep in touch with myself or Cynthia um, if you're interested in, in roles in the future. Next slide, please. So I know that navigating your job search a lot of times can feel like the image on the left. I'm sure most of y'all have seen these. Um, just trying to figure out like where you start, where you go, what do you need to know? It's like a lot of, you know, not knowing what you don't know. Um, I want to take you guys to a little bit more of the slide on the right where you're like, you know, rain man when it comes to networking, just like knowing everything in terms of where to start um, and you feel like you're set up for success. So that is my goal. And like I said, I'm happy to be a resource not only during this session, but in the future as well. Next slide, please. So I want to start with resumes and cover letters. I think it is really important as you're getting ready to get out there, just have a um, kind of skeleton or outline um, and you can always iterate on it. Um, but the first thing is you want to kind of ATS proof your resume. So what does that mean? ATS is um, applicant tracking system. So a lot of companies nowadays, um, big companies like Reddit, as well as smaller startups are using some sort of system to manage their process. Um, and there are certain resumes that actually won't parse as easily. So you want to make sure that you have a um, either Word or PDF version so that when you're applying, it's easily searchable. Um, an example of like what not to do in this area would be having like an image version. If it's an image file, it's really hard for those systems to, to read that. 
Um, next, you want to keep it short and simple. So um, for folks like most of the people on this call, I think one page is sufficient, maybe two if you have, um, you know, a lot of internships that you're wanting to include, um, or if it's resume plus cover letter, um, but you really want to keep it short and simple and think to yourself, you know, you've got maybe 20 to 30 seconds um, in that initial view that a recruiter or hiring manager is looking at your resume, how can you really make a strong first impression? Um, next, you want to build a narrative. You really think about your resume and cover letter as a story of um, where are you coming from? What are you interested in? Um, how have your skills and experience brought you to the point that you're at now? Um, so that kind of progression as you're going through um, your, your work experience is important. Um, also customizing based on the role, especially if you're applying um, to roles that are in different industries or maybe different types of um, jobs, um, just making a few little tweaks to your experience to really cater to um, what is going to feel parallel to that role. So I tell people a lot of times, even if you have the job description and your resume, you know, up side by side as you're getting ready to submit, really making sure that you can draw those parallels and that um, you your experience feels relatable to what they're looking for. Um, next, anytime that you have something quantifiable, you want to highlight this on your resume. So um, that could be like number of tasks automated. This could be, you know, efficiency gained um, for a sales role, for example, is like, you know, revenue brought to the company. Um, anything that is really tied to either business impact or, or what you've been able to do. And then four specific roles. So I don't know if there's anybody on the call that's in like, you know, design or anything like that. But if you have work samples, a link portfolio, for those of you that are working on projects, you really want to highlight that work. Um, so, you know, linking to either your website or your portfolio, I would definitely recommend and kind of giving that a, a once over before you include it on the resume. Um, and on the right hand side, I've included some of my favorite tools. I think almost all of these have a free version. Um, so definitely take some of these down. Um, resume build is a really great one that you can kind of type in your experience and it will spit out a template for you. Um, Canva is really great for formatting. Um, and then we've got Hunter and Job Scan, which are a little bit more focused on aligning your experience to the job profile. Um, I think Hunter also has a tracker that you can use to um, keep track of all the jobs you're applying to, um, so it can help you stay organized. If some of you are using other tools, um, that's one that I definitely recommend. And Resume Genius is another one that's really great for, for templating. Next slide, please. Um, so applications and networking. Once your resume and cover letter is ready to go, um, where do you start? So, um, you know, number one, I want to say take a look at your profiles. Um, anything that's on there um, that you're linking across your resume, so portfolio, GitHub, what have you, you want to make sure that it's cleaned up, that everything kind of looks consistent um, across those. As you're starting to look at jobs, I really recommend reading reviews. So um, you've got Glassdoor, Blind for technical roles, um, Trustpilot, and G2 Crowd if it's a product-focused um, company. Um, and really kind of knowing, number one, what you're getting into. Is it a company that you want to work for? Um, but these will also give you some insight into things that you could potentially include in your cover letter or resume that are aligned with what the company is doing. Um, next, this is one that I really, really recommend, sending personalized messages. So when it comes to in-mails, connection across emails, I think anytime you're reaching out to somebody that you don't already know, um, you want to send them a short message about why you're reaching out, um, maybe why their profile was interesting to you or why their company is interesting to you and what you're looking for. I think it sets a really strong foundation for the conversation um, and you're actually more likely to, to get a response as well too. So that helps um, just making sure that your efforts are um, worthwhile. Um, next, finding community. This is something that I really recommend. So, you know, networking with classmates, um, you know, future colleagues. If you find somebody that's in a role that you're like, hey, they're five years ahead of me, but I really like the trajectory um, that they're on. How did they get to where they're at? Those are really great people to connect with because um, a lot of times they may be getting messages from recruiters and getting more junior roles sent their way that they could pass along to you. Um, there's also, depending on the field that you're in, like Slack communities online, um, Discord groups um, where you can join and really get that support, um, communities on Reddit where you can do some research. Um, it's all out there for you and really 
really encourage you to to find community and you know find your tribe and it also helps to have a support system as you're starting to search um, and finally, um, I think it's really important as you're starting to apply, um, and this is really more in getting preparation for, for interviews, just doing some basic research on the company, the types of products and services that they offer, um, and you know, having a couple sound bites ready to go um, so that when you go into those initial conversations and they ask you, what do you know about Reddit? I'm just using that as an example. You know, we're, most people know about Reddit, but um, just having a couple things that you, that are um, ready to go. On the right hand side, some things I don't recommend. We call it spray and pray in the industry, but like applying to say like 50 roles, you know, no customized messages, just like adding any recruiter that you see on LinkedIn. Um, you're not going to get as much bang for your buck. Um, with the efforts if you're not personalizing. Um, next, like submitting applications and just kind of waiting and, and seeing. I would definitely encourage, especially for your top companies, submit your application and send a follow-up message, you know, whether it's to the email that they provide, if you know it's something that's being responded to, um, or, you know, checking in with the hiring manager, sending that connection request after to say, hey, I've already applied for this role and I'd really love to share why I think I'm a good fit. Um, another thumbs down, don't message the whole company. Um, just pick a couple people to reach out to. Um, it, it does get a little silly if you're like adding, you know, 50, 100 people on LinkedIn from the same place. Um, don't rely on a single resource. So, you know, LinkedIn is really great for jobs, but there's also Indeed, um, there's Google Jobs, there's a lot of job boards out there um, for folks that are looking for remote. There's remote specific. Um, and for people that are interested in startup jobs, there's AngelList. So make sure that you're diversifying um, where you're looking for jobs as well. Um, and make sure that you fill out all the application questions. Um, so sometimes there's things that will be mar marked as, you know, optional, um, you know, unless it's something that you feel really doesn't apply, um, I would say just fill out everything thoroughly, if it can't hurt. Next slide, please. Um, so this is where we get into like the nitty gritty of how you can set up your profile. So I put mine as an example on the right. There's definitely some other good ones out there, but this is low hanging fruit here. Um, for your headline, um, you want to include your subject matter expertise. So for folks that are studying computer science, for example, computer science student at you know um, Foothill, for example, um, any industry that you're interested in. Um, so especially for folks that are looking to make a transition, you've got kind of like your dream industries, put that in your headline because this is another thing that's going to show up when recruiters are searching for profiles that might be a fit. Um, and then as you gain more experience um, titles that you've held, you can keep this kind of broad um, experience field studied. Um, all of this is going to help. And you really want to think about your profile in kind of an SEO way. So you're optimizing to be indexed as much as possible in search. So how can you add those keywords that are going to be aligned to um, the jobs that you're looking for? Next in the about section, um, you want to have some conversation starters. I think this one is really great, especially as you're networking. So I put a bunch of things in here like DNI, learning and development, remote work, accessibility, skincare. Like you can get as personal as you like, but um, I think it really helps to just give that extra kind of personalized um, touch to, to your background. Um, and then also include in the about section, like the types of roles that you would be interested in. Again, this is all indexed um, when recruiters are searching. Um, and as you get into your experience, you want to keep it relevant to the field that you want to transition into. So um, I see this a lot where people are making the transition from, um, you know, junior college or university to corporate or startup world, and they still have like a lot of retail roles on their LinkedIn. Like you can include those, um, but I do think it takes away a little bit as you gain more experience. So you want to kind of phase those things out um, as you gain more job titles that um, are aligned. Um, and then big point here, you want your titles and the timeline. So the dates that you've worked to match your, your resume. Next slide, please. Um, so again, going on education at all your schools, this is something, again, that's going to show up in search, add your background um, in terms of the major that you studied, um, adding even like the groups that you were involved in. Um, this really helps from a DNI perspective as companies are searching and they want to know, you know, what, what types of things are you interested in. 
skills. Um, you only have so many skills on LinkedIn actually that you can add. Um, so I would align these to your to your job search. So um, if you're in engineering, for example, and you know you want to be in front end roles in the future, um, you'd want to have a lot of those front end related technologies on here. So like JavaScript, React. Um, all of those things. So think about, you know, what are the tools that I'm going to be using in my role, especially from a technical standpoint, if that's your field, um, and then aligning those in the skill section. Again, you want to show up in search as much as possible. Um, recommendations is a section that a lot of folks overlook. Um, and I think it's a really great one to add to your resume to really optimize or add to your LinkedIn rather. Um, so First bet, uh, colleagues and classmates. So people that you've worked with, this is a really great way to get um, folks that you've worked in um, group projects, for example. So um, what can they recommend about your work? Um, and it's almost like a very mini version of you know, a reference. Um, and it's okay to actively solicit recommendations as well too. So um, I have a template that I can share with the group um, after the fact about um, when you're reaching out to people that you've either worked with before, um, classmates, et cetera, um, that you can ask for recommendations and um, highlighting specific areas that, that you want them to mention in there. Um, also mentors as well too. So what that's gonna do is um, bump up your profile and search in terms of like the types of recommendations that you're receiving. So um, especially if it's showing up in the feed, um, I pulled a colleague's example here, but you can see she has 25 recommendations that she's received. Um, and the first two people are, you know, pretty senior um, folks showing up on her profile. So that's also gonna help you in showing that you have somebody that's vouching for you that is further along in their career. And um, you know, you you get to kind of um, ride on the coattails of their their title as well as their reputation in the industry, which never hurts. Um, and then finally, languages and interests. I think this is another great way to personalize your profile. Um, and especially for folks that, you know, if you're bilingual or you're looking for roles that are maybe not based in the US in the future, um, this is a really great way to highlight um, and get shown up in those searches um, as companies are looking for folks that have um, different types of backgrounds. Um, cool, so I think this is my last slide here. I know that I've covered a lot of information, but um, I wanna make sure that once y'all have your profiles ready that you're targeting the right audience. So this is recruiter focused, but I think that this is a great start for people um, just getting going. So um, on the left, I have in-house recruiter. So I am in this category, people who work for the company that they're hiring for. So common titles, you've got corporate recruiter, talent acquisition manager, um, sourcer, those people are, are um, focused more on outbound. Um, so not necessarily just people that apply. Um, or if you're getting really specific, like a type of job function and recruiter. So you'll see like legal recruiter, engineering recruiter, and you know what types of roles they're, they're working on. So they hire for the company that they work at, um, usually within a specific team or vertical. So it will be helpful for you as you know, okay, I want these types of roles. I, I know what recruiters to target within that. And it is a really great resource if you want to work at a specific company. So, um, you know, if you've got your kind of top three um, and you say, you know, I don't care what happens in the next five years, but I know I would love to work for XYZ company, start to connect with those recruiters way ahead of when you may be interested because you're basically starting to build the relationship at that time. Um, and a lot of times you'll get invites to like exclusive, you know, company or networking or recruiting events that you can start to build that relationship with the company. So when you go to apply in the future, they're like, oh, you know, we know Drake, we've been, you know, chatting with this person for, you know, three years at this point. Um, next is agency recruiters. So um, they are, we call it like third party. So a lot of times they're working for multiple companies, common titles can be account manager, headhunter, career consultant. There's a lot more in here, but um, anything where it's, um, you know, basically like recruiter, but it's more of a consultancy, consultancy type 
company. So they're hiring for a variety of companies that their agency has partnerships with. Um, back in the day when I was working agency, you know, we would have anything from like 50 to 60 companies hiring at a time. So this is a really great resource if number one, you want to keep your options open. Um, this is also a really great way to get your foot in the door. Um, a lot of times agencies will have more entry level roles. Um, especially if you're open to contract work. So if you're open to, you know, attempt to hire, contracting for a short period of time, um, maybe a summer job, um, agencies are a really great way to go. Um, another plus that I didn't put on the slide, but um, a lot of agencies pay week to week too. So it's nice to get a, a weekly paycheck instead of uh, bi-weekly if, if that's a sell for you, um, definitely helps there. Um, and those agency connections, a lot of times, you know, you may be able to keep those relationships long term. Um, a lot of agency recruiters will tend to stay with agencies longer. So then you've got um, kind of a, a backup person in your, your pocket if you ever need um, to be back on the market or, or need support um, in future job searches. I think this is all the content. You can go to the next slide. I think this is the last one. Yeah. So I know I covered a lot of information. Hopefully it was helpful, but um, want to open things up to questions and we can go back um, to reference any, any slides that um, folks need more time with. Hey, I'm also wondering um, in preparation, I have questions, but I want to wait for the students. Um, if you could open a LinkedIn, pro like even your LinkedIn profile, and um, if there are questions that come up to specific sections, we could even sure. be able to demo as yeah, we go. Yeah, I can do that. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, let's open it up. Um, if, if you want to unmute yourself, you can. If you want to put a question in the chat box, feel free. Um, this is your chance to hear um, straight from a recruiter about what things, you know, to be looking for as you're thinking about careers and internships and things like that. Um, I don't know if you covered this already. I kind of came late. Um, but like when doing like projects to put on your resume, like can you give some advice on like what kind of projects to do or um, what, what are some things to work on that would make your resume strong? Mm. Yeah, and um, can I ask what um, what your major is? Uh, computer science. Okay, cool. So um, for computer science folks, um, with the projects, if you can, especially if you've done a ton of projects, try to have some that are somewhat related to the company um, that you're applying to. So that could be like similar or related technology. Like you take a look at their careers page and you figure out what tech stack they're on and you're like okay they're really heavy in these so let me put all of the projects that i've worked in um, with those technologies um, i've also seen projects where maybe the type of project um, or the theme of the project is related to the industry so um, you know an example could be like you know in the autonomous vehicle space like maybe you did a project um, that was going to be focused on self-driving cars i don't know why that was just the first thing that came into my head but um, you know that would be a really great project project if you're applying to like Lyft, Waymo, Cruise, you know, and so trying to align that because um, what it's going to say to the companies like, hey, even though I haven't worked in this field yet, I have related experience and interest in this field. So I would definitely um, suggest that. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay, thank you. Um, I have two questions, if I may. Go ahead, sure. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yep. Uh, the first question is, uh, are there um, decisions to be made like before the interview? Like, um, it's just the decision was already made before interviews even begun. What, um, could you get a little bit more specific what you mean? Uh, yes, yes. By that, I mean, uh, I just had an interview with um, Amazon for a summer intern. I, I had a really great conversation with the recruiter, and I think I answered his uh, behavioral, behavioral questions and technical questions like relatively well, but I, I still got turned off. And, and I asked around for, you know, uh, my friends, like very reliable sources, and some of them told me, like, um, it just, some interview is just a process um, to, you know, just reject the person or it, it, 
What I'm saying is the decision has already been made. Like you are the you are the sophomore, you're not a senior, but I I cannot just turn you turn you down directly. I have to go through the interview process to you know just to push you down. Hmm, that's interesting. I think every company is different. Um, you know, for Reddit, we're not moving anybody forward if we don't think there's a potential fit. Um, so I think that that is dependent on the company. I would reach out and, and see um, if there was any feedback the recruiter could provide after the call. Um, but it's also possible that it had nothing to do with you at all. And either the job requirements changed, um, you know, the volume of applicants, you know, they decided to cut things down, you know, you were kind of later in the process and they had people that were further along. There are actually a lot of things that end up being really not personal. So um, I think it's a really competitive market, you know, unfortunately, like rejection is gonna happen. You know, we see rejection on our end too, with, you know, recruiting where, you know, people will turn down an offer. So I think it's one of those things that um, if you can get the feedback, great because you can figure out if there's something that you need to diagnose within you know the call that maybe didn't go so well or it could be something that's just completely beyond anything you could control and I would say don't take it too personal right right um, uh, the email statement like uh, we cannot provide any feedback so that's it so like there's nothing I can find out another question is are community college uh, students facing disadvantage in finding you know in term or just a job in general? Good question. Yeah, great question. I mean, I, I went to community college myself. I had actually a really long um, college journey and, and just graduated in, in 2020 after 10 plus years of being back and forth between school and working and all of that. So um, I think especially tech, you will find that, um, you know, companies like Reddit, more progressive companies, even like earlier stage startups are going to be way more open to a variety of backgrounds where, you know, it's almost a plus that you're coming from, you know, community college background because that's, you know, diversity of experience that, um, you know, companies Aren't, aren't, aren't seeing or, or maybe are missing. Um, I think with internships, it's difficult because there are a lot of internships, unfortunately, like you know ours where um, you need to be in a four year program. Um, so I would make sure that when you're targeting things, you know that you're looking out for those ones where you're, you're not going to qualify, but there are still internships out there that are very much open to community college students. Right, right, yeah. it makes sense. And that's Thank all my questions. Thank you. Good. I'll also add that um, we definitely at Reddit, um, like she mentioned, we do have like some hard requirements with graduation dates um, and such, but even then, you know, um, we definitely don't like um, discriminate against if you did come from a community college background, like we definitely are welcome to all schools and it's honestly not something that we look at outside of the graduation dates. So um, definitely would not be discouraged because um, of the community college background. Thank you. Would it be fair to say that it's a really competitive field in general and like you have to just, like college applications, you just have to put your applications out there and do the best you can and rejections aren't personal. I mean, is that the case in the tech world? Yeah. Yeah, it's a volume game. And I always tell people like each role is going to be a stepping stone. I remember even going from agency to um, tech to the startup world, like I had probably 20 interviews before I found, you know, started to get offers. Um, I think the biggest piece there, number one, like, please do not take rejection personal. I know it's, it's like hard to you know, believe that coming from a recruiter, but it, it really is true. Um, volume is going to be your best friend. Um, also do not stop interviewing until you get your offers. Like, I think this is one that really slows people down is like, oh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm in later stages with a couple companies and I think things are going really well. That's great. I hope you get, you know, the, the best um, one that you're rooting for, but don't slow down, continue to take those interviews, continue to submit applications until that, that PDF with the DocuSign is in your inbox, like keep going because you don't want to bank on things um, where, you know, one job might not work out and then you're starting over and that's, you know, another month or two um, out. So keep that momentum. Um, and I think also for better or worse, like having some momentum in your job search will help you speed things up when you tell companies like, oh, I'm, I'm you know, in later stages and I've got this going on and this going on 
I hate that it's this way, but it like makes you a more attractive candidate when you're busier. So um, that helps too. Cool. Other questions that people have? I just have like a quick one. Um, you mentioned like doing research for companies and having sound bites um, like available. So what would you say is a good example of a sound bite for an interview like at Reddit? Yeah, I think that's, that one's great. And it's nice because like, we're in the news so often these days that you can like pretty much go, you can, and this is a good template is you can put like company name and then like news 2021. And then, you know, just like look at the first couple links, but um, a good example would be like, we just launched, um, you know, our preview of Reddit talk, which is going to be our audio rooms. So, you know, when I'm chatting with candidates, they're like, oh yeah, I just saw like congrats on the, the launch for, you know, Reddit talk. And you don't actually need to know anything about the product, but just the fact that you're paying attention. Um, I think another one for early stage startups is like, if you look up the company and um, like Crunchbase, for example, seeing like, oh, congrats on your series C raise last year, you know, um, just having something you don't actually need to spend too much time, I would say like five to 10 minutes of a Google search per company will give you enough to go off of. Um, and if you don't know the ins and outs of a company's product, that's okay. Um, you know, saying like, oh, I, I quickly looked you up and you know, this looks cool, but I'd love to learn more. Um, that also makes that initial conversation really easy because the, you know, the recruiter then knows kind of what your, your knowledge is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. As we're waiting for more questions and people, if you have questions and want to put it in the chat because you don't want to unmute yourself, that's okay too. Um, Shay, I was wondering, just because I noticed that quite a few people don't have LinkedIn profiles, so they might not, they, maybe they've not even seen what the platform looks like. Do you mind going on there and even just demonstrating how you find recruiters and how, because I know when I started using LinkedIn, I just first connected with my friends and that was easy to do. But then mm -hmm. when I'm starting to look for people I don't even know, I don't always know how to start. So how do you find technical recruiters? How do you find a company? And just showing a little bit of that search process. Um, sure, as a totally. Demo. Yeah, does someone want to give out a, an example company um, and, and type of job you want me to, to look up? NASA. NASA? Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's look at NASA. Hold on, let me pull up my my LinkedIn. Cool. Can y'all see my screen? It's yes. a little bit small, but maybe that's the best we can do. Or it might just be my, my screen, actually. <laughs> Is that better? That's good. Yep. Okay. Sometimes I'm super zoomed out um, <laughs> because I have like multiple tabs open and um, it's a little bit easier to see. Okay. So first I'm going to go to NASA. Um, cool. We'll start with this one, but there are some companies will, where you'll see that they have multiple divisions or you know multiple locations. So sometimes they have more than one page. Um, so just start with the first one that shows up and sometimes you'll need to um, rabbit hole a little bit. So I'm on NASA's page. So first you're gonna navigate to people. And then you can use this search. Um, this is kind of interesting too. I know for some of you that are newer to LinkedIn, um, you may not have a lot of connections, but um, if you scroll down in the people section, you'll always be able to see people you may know. Um, and even if you have like a you know second or third degree connection, they'll show up here. Um, and so this is a good way to figure out um, if you have somebody in your network that is connected to this person, you can ask them for an intro and um, you can get pretty shameless with this. I think most people, especially if you have a first degree connection that knows someone, it, it doesn't hurt to reach out. Um, one of my favorite sayings is don't ask, don't get. Um, so yeah, um, but say I wanna search for recruiters at NASA. Let me start with recruiter and see if that bumps up anybody. So looks like 63 employees, where are they? I need to open this up more. Yeah, as you can see, like LinkedIn still, even for me, is not super intuitive. Um, there's usually a section where I can see all people. I think it might still be down here. Let's try this again. Next. Okay, 
I'm going to try a different way because this is not giving me what I want. So I'm going to come back to search and I'm going to do NASA and recruiter. I really just want the search part to come up. So if you're doing a search in um, the LinkedIn search, there's all of these filters at the top. Um, so first I want to change the people. So I'm just searching people. Um, and then the other thing I want to do is current company. Let's just do these. Show results. Um, so now I'm seeing everybody that has recruiter in the title that is at um, NASA. Then you can get even more specific if you want. Um, if you're looking for like on-site roles, like you can look for somebody that's based in a specific location. Um, you can look for people that are, you know, first or second degree connections as you start to build things out. But um, I would just start to open up a couple of these profiles. Let's see university recruiter here, senior recruiter. person, head of talent. Um, so pull up a couple profiles. Okay, they're starting over here. Let's see if this loads. Let me know if it, it freezes at any point um, as I start to open these up. I do have a lot of tabs open. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get one of those tab managers because um, always causes problems. Okay, so I'm on Anjali's profile. Um, I see what she's working on. This is more broad. Let's see. Okay, so here you can see in her experience, so she recruits for technical business, and then she's got some more specific things here. So you know, like, hey, if I'm in any of these functions, sounds like she could be a good first person to reach out to. Um, so if you decide like, hey, I'm going to try my luck, um, you can come in here. Um, oh, this is another hack that a lot of people don't know about is if somebody has this um, gold LinkedIn badge here, um, they have LinkedIn premium and it is usually free to in message um, people who have premium if they have that, that functionality turned on. So let me see if she does. This is my LinkedIn recruiter. Okay, so um, doesn't look like she does, but what you can do, the nice workaround is send a connection request. And then here's where you wanna add your note. Like, hey, so-and-so, you know, I'm interested in these types of roles and, you know, I'd love to connect with you to learn about a potential fit. Um, you can kind of keep it broad if you want. You can make it more personal. You have 300 characters um, and you'd basically just rinse and repeat and do this with, um, you know, each profile that you find for the companies that you're looking for. So coming to their page, um, checking either within their about section or within um, their experience, what types of roles they're hiring for. So it looks like this person is hiring for software and system engineering um, within these divisions. So um, just takes a couple minutes, but you can basically do this for any company um, and just utilizing the search filters um, and, and that will give you a good kind of jumping off point. And I think what's, what's cool about LinkedIn, so I encourage everybody to get a LinkedIn profile if you don't already. Um, and what I always tell people is just start with your friends. I mean, get your friends to get a LinkedIn profile if they don't already. Start to connect with your friends, connect with your professors, there's always going to be at least 10 people that you can your probably family. with. Yeah. Your relatives, your uncles, your aunts who are in business or who are in some sort of industry. Because I always give this example. I moved out to the Bay Area about eight years ago. I only knew like three people and I was starting looking for jobs. And I started using LinkedIn a little bit more actively than I had before and found a job in California where I was second degree connected with somebody in Boston, which is where I was from. And I reached out to him. And like, like Shay said, if you don't ask, you're never going to know. So I always say, I'm going to ask because the, the worst they'll say is no, or they'll not get back to me. But that person helped me get connected with this job in California. And that's how I got my first job here. So LinkedIn is really, really powerful. As long as you personalize those messages, as long as you build your network, which is stuff you can start doing now, like today, tonight, 
you know, get set aside an hour and work on it. And the returns on it is really, really going to benefit you in the end. Yeah, especially when you're job searching. I mean, LinkedIn is where recruiters, HR managers, hiring managers are hanging out. And especially you'll see, you know, the dividends will pay off when you're later in your career. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting way too many messages from them. hire me. Like, <laughs> but it's just about getting those first, you know, one or two jobs under your belt, getting your foot in the door, um, starting to build a presence for yourself. But yeah, my, my last two roles I got from, from networking and um, it definitely is nice when you get to that point where you're not having to go through, you know, 20 30 rounds of interviews to to land a job yeah and don't and don't wait till you're job hunting to start building your profile do that now while you're still in school have some time build your network build your presence start just just start messaging people that you want to talk with and set up informational interviews with it doesn't don't wait yeah. for the job market time of your life yeah um so, i see a question, question from stephanie yeah let's get a question from stephanie and then whoever had the question um, she said here, as there are different types of career options for a computer science graduate, if in the future I want to try to switch careers, for example, from software engineering to data science or project management, how can I make myself look like a viable candidate to recruiters? Yeah. yeah. I actually think that, yeah, with computer science, like, especially if you realize pretty early on it's not your passion, like, that is totally okay. Um, I am very pro career pivot. And I think, especially um, as you're trying to, to make that transition, I think um, that that having that background is actually a plus for a lot of the roles that you mentioned, data science, project management. It's just finding those companies that, especially for data science, like, not every company is going to have a data science function. Um, so you want to make sure that when you're doing research that um, the, the nature of what they're doing calls for data science, that they already have that sort of department there. Um, if you know that that's a, a transition that you want to um, move into. Um, and actually, it's really great if, you know, say you get your first job in, you know, a junior engineer role and you make it pretty clear that like this is a transition I want and start to have that conversation with the the company um, that you're at I think it's actually way easier to transition when you're already at a company and make the pivot than it is to try to pivot you know um, completely not having any any exposure and we see a lot of kind of interdepartmental transfers here at reddit where you know somebody started as an engineer and they're like yeah, you know, I want to move into like machine learning or data science or, you know, getting that foundation, um, you know, proving yourself in, in your role, having your manager really um, vouch for you um, is, is going to help. Um, and same thing with project management, um, you know, raising your hand to like take on those project manage type tasks um, while you're in the role that you're in um, and then you know starting to build that resume with those things that um, are going to be transferable I would also do oh go ahead Cynthia I was just going to add um, to also take advantage of this time uh, during your internships to really explore those different careers because a lot of interns I talked to had like in a computer science or engineering background but then they were interested in product management or data science um, and so they really were able to pivot within even just their college career because they were getting those internship opportunities and a lot of these internships are the opportunities for you to really explore and they're not ask, asking for an nearly as much um, experience as you would when you're looking at full-time role. So that's a really good opportunity too, if you're already thinking of other um, paths and that you might be interested in. Now's the time to try before you buy, you know, test things out, try things out, especially like you don't want to be set on something and then, you know, you're in a field for five or 10 years longer than you want a, with something that you're not passionate about, you know, like, put those feelers out early on to try to figure out like, what do I even want? Um, and then that way you can start to build your resume towards it. Um, let's take one more question. Um, Swift, did you have another question? Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, the question is, how do you, how do you keep the relationship with your connections? I mean, you just, you just add it on your LinkedIn and you just, you just stay here and uh, just stay there forever, right? I think one of the best things that you can do is um, 
you know, within your feed, like if you see that your connections are posting something like throw that like that comment, you know, especially if somebody's starting a conversation, you'll start to make LinkedIn friends, as I like to call them, like pretty easily of just like engaging on people's posts. I think goes a long way um and same like you'll get if you turn your notifications on if somebody has like a birthday or anniversary or work anniversary um i think those are another great way especially if it's somebody that you want to actively maintain the relationship with like some sending somebody a congrats and being like oh congrats on your work anniversary like what's the biggest thing that you were proud of this year like i actually respond to people that you know reach out and um, start conversations that way i know it's a little bit awkward but I think COVID has really leveled the playing field in a lot of ways where people that maybe wouldn't have the time, um, you know, online before are, you know, hanging out on LinkedIn, like they've got that 15, 30 minutes free for a coffee, virtual coffee chat. Um, you know, having those people that, you know, like, I want to keep in touch with this person. Maybe I have like an advice or a question or something that I can reach out to them for, especially like with the peer thing. Um, you know, I am so grateful for the people that were, you know, recruiters that were much further along than me that I would send them a connection request. Like, I'm really a, a fan of, you know, how you've been able to grow your career. Like, are you okay with keeping in touch and um, sending them a note like, hey, I'm struggling in this area you know, do you have 15 minutes for me to, you know, pick your brain and then maybe offering something in, in return of, you know, I'm willing to beta test your app or I'm willing to, you know, X, Y, Z. Like, I think when you can approach it from a relationship standpoint where, you know, what can I offer you as much as I'm asking for, for things in return, um, those are going to be the people that you can, can keep in touch with long term. Right, right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot on LinkedIn. I was going to say it'd be cool to see the rec recommendation one, but I think we're out of time. Uh, I, rec I recommend that everybody check out the recommending um, part of LinkedIn and think about, you know, you, you're asking your instructors for recommendations, but you might want to ask a peer or a teacher for a recommendation on LinkedIn too. And those are often really short, so they don't take as much time um, yeah. or as much pressure for those. Um, so can we thank Shay for, be, uh, for her presentation? Really, really appreciate it. Um, Shay, if you don't mind sharing back those slides with me, then I'll yeah, PDF them and, and share them with the folks here today. Um, and yeah, Cynthia, thanks for, for your comments as well. Just appreciate your, your being a resource for our students today. Totally. Thank you. Yeah, feel free to add me. You've got a free connection here in me, and I'm happy to um, give anybody feedback on their profiles or just be available for questions um, as you're you're going through everything. I know it can be a lot um, and I'm, I'm happy to help. Great. Thanks, Cynthia and Shay. See y'all later. I'll be, I'll, I'll follow up after. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Bye. Bye. Um, for the rest of the students who aren't Tech Core, um, you're also free to go. As I, I think I've emailed everybody, we have another event next Friday, which is about my first tech internship and we'll have a panel so definitely encourage you to come to that and just get a better idea of what to expect in your first tech internship. So otherwise, I'll send the recording out for people if you want it. Um, and then I'll send the slides out to those of you who are here too. Um, so I'll be in touch and I'll see a lot of you around in the coming weeks too. So thanks to you all. Um, so you guys can go and then the Tech Core people stick around. Thanks, Sophia, for the this presentation. Yeah, definitely. Good to see you, Eric. Nice and to see you. I'll look at that email you sent me about the Slack. All right. Great. Sounds good.